In several forums for electronics, I've come across discussions for building a laboratory power supply based on the famous 723 voltage regulator integrated circuit, but with a specific requirement the output voltage to be adjustable from 0 volts instead of 2 volts, which otherwise is the minimum output voltage specified in the datasheet for this circuit. This minimum is a direct result of another limitation and that's the minimum allowable voltage on the inputs of the error amplifier, which is 2 volts relative to the V- terminal, in order for it to function properly. To overcome this limitation using an auxiliary negative power supply is often advised and every now and then the following schematic is suggested as one such solution. This schematic comes from one old article published in the July-August 1978 issue of the Elector magazine. As you can see, here, instead of to the 0 volts rail, the V- pin and the two lower ends of the voltage dividers are connected to a negative supply, which is nothing more but a simple regulator with a Zener diode. The idea is that by pulling V- to a lower potential, the inputs of the error amplifier can go lower as well provided that the voltage between them and the V- is not less than the minimum required of 2 volts. In this particular configuration, V- is at minus 4.7 volts and in a steady state both inputs are at 0 volts relative to the ground rail. With this modification, the output voltage can swing between 0 and 30 volts, again relative to the ground rail, and at the first glance it may seem that the problem has been resolved. But is that really the case? Well, not really, and you'll see why later in the video. But before I proceed with the remarks that I have for this power supply, let's first do a short review of the series voltage regulation, the 723 block diagram and the typical application circuit proposed in the manufacturer's datasheet. Then, from those circuits, with just a basic knowledge of electric circuit theory and by following simple reasoning, will invent or evolve the electro power supply circuit and come to the main point of this video. A series voltage regulator consists of a voltage reference, error amplifier and power pass transistor. The elements are connected in such a way to form a negative feedback control loop. The voltage regulator operates by comparing the actual output voltage to the voltage reference. The output voltage is fed through a resistive voltage divider into the inverting input of the error amplifier. The non-inverting input is connected to the reference voltage. The difference is amplified and used to control the regulation element in such a way as to reduce the voltage error. For best performance, the reference voltage must remain stable over a wide range of temperatures. The transistor in this role is usually termed as a series pass transistor. The 723 integrated circuit is a precision voltage regulator designed primarily for series regulator applications. It consists of a temperature compensated voltage reference with an amplifier, an error amplifier, an output transistor and an adjustable output current limiter. It provides high ripple rejection, excellent input and load regulation, excellent temperature stability and low standby current. The key element of the voltage reference is a buried or subsurface Zener reference which offers very low temperature drift and low noise. The typical value of the reference voltage is 7.15 volts. This is the basic application circuit for output voltages between 7 volts and 37 volts and this is the application circuit for output voltages between 2 volts and 7 volts. And this is an application circuit where the two previous circuits are combined and it is used for output voltages between 2 volts and 37 volts. Here a fraction of the reference voltage is fed to the non-inverting input of the error amplifier and a fraction of the output voltage is fed to the inverting input of the error amplifier through the feedback divider consisting of R3 and R4. To achieve an output voltage adjustment, typically the resistor R3 is replaced with a potentiometer. Let's stop and think for a moment which options do we have to make this circuit give 0 volts at the output while it's in the normal operating mode. Well, with just a very basic knowledge of electric circuit theory, 
one can come to an idea to insert an auxiliary voltage source of two volts in series with the output but oriented in the opposite direction so that the new output voltage will be actually shifted down by two volts for the whole output range. We just have to find a voltage source that can sync currents up to the maximum current that this power supply can provide and keep its value stable in all working conditions. But even if we ignore the fact that finding or designing such voltage source is not as simple as it may seem, with this option we'll also have to accept that the maximum output voltage will be 2 volts lower than the maximum obtained with the original circuit and that the circuit will be less efficient due to the additional power losses. Since we are not satisfied with that, let's go back to the basic circuit and see if there is a different place in it where we can insert this voltage source so that it will again oppose to the output voltage but in the same time if we can somehow avoid the output current to pass through it and avoid reducing the maximum output voltage. To make this more obvious, first I'm going to redraw the connections to the ground rail. This rearrangement will also make it easier for you to see what the biggest flaw of the electro power supply is. So unlike the previous time, let's see what will happen if we put the auxiliary voltage in this branch. Well, it's obvious that in this case the output voltage will be shifted down by the value of the auxiliary negative voltage. That means that the minimum output voltage can now be zero provided that the auxiliary voltage is at least 2 volts. The voltage difference between V plus and V minus pins of the 723 will be higher than the voltage difference in the basic circuit by the value of the auxiliary voltage. Because of this, the maximum output voltage will not be shifted down, so we can swing the output voltage to the same maximum value as in the basic circuit. The output current will not flow through the auxiliary voltage source and the additional power losses will be insignificant. I hope that you also recognize that this circuit is actually the core of the elector power supply circuit. We just have to replace the auxiliary voltage source with a voltage source with a Zener diode. And now with this arrangement of the components I hope that it's more obvious. Since the output voltage that we get from this circuit is actually a difference of the output voltage measured relative to the V- pin and the auxiliary voltage and this is a good and safe way to write that relation to avoid any misunderstanding any deviation of this auxiliary voltage will be seen as a deviation in the output voltage. Since in the elector circuit an auxiliary voltage source with a Zener diode is used, we know for sure that two parameters in particular will affect the performance, the dynamic resistance and the voltage temperature coefficient of the Zener diode. So any deviation of the mains voltage, deviation of the auxiliary supply load current or a temperature change inside the device will influence the voltage drop of the Zener diode and it will be seen as a deviation of the output voltage. In order to demonstrate and substantiate what I said previously, I built this test circuit on a protoboard, then I did several tests and measurements and now it's time to see what I got. This is the first circuit that I'll use to demonstrate the regulation of the input voltage changes for an output voltage set to 5 volts. As you can see, now I'm decreasing the input voltage and for a change of 13 volts at the input, we got only 2 millivolts of change in the output voltage. Now if I return the input back to 28 volts, the output will return to its initial value of 5 volts. This is the same circuit but now the V- pin and the two bottom ends of the voltage dividers are connected to an auxiliary negative supply voltage of minus 4.7 volts. For this part, first I'm going to adjust the output voltage to zero by using this potentiometer and then I'm going to show you the output voltage swing. So for this circuit, the output went from 0 volts to almost 27 volts. The input voltage is 28 volts. In this part, I'm measuring various voltages in the circuit. All voltages are as expected. The output voltage is set to 5 volts.
Here I'm going to demonstrate the regulation of the input voltage changes for an output voltage set to 5 volts. As you can see, now I'm decreasing the input voltage and for a change of 14 volts at the input, we got 4 millivolts of change in the output voltage. This is the most important demonstration. Here I'm going to simulate changes in the auxiliary voltage by 0.2 volts in both directions and you'll see that, as a result of that, the output voltage will deviate by the same values. So again, with this simulation I clearly demonstrated that any deviation of the auxiliary negative voltage will be seen as a deviation in the output voltage. This is to demonstrate the effects of the temperature changes to the circuit itself without the Zener diode which will be inserted later. First I'm going to lower the temperature around the circuit by using a fan. So the output voltage dropped by barely 2 millivolts. This time I'm going to hit the 723 by keeping a soldering iron over it twice, each time for less than 5 seconds. So we saw that the output voltage increased by 8 mV and then after the heat source was removed it slowly returned to its initial value of 5 volts. The circuit is still the same but now we are going to measure the output voltage relative to the V- pin. This is to demonstrate that the only voltage that is regulated with this circuit is the voltage between the output and the V- pin. For an output which was previously set to 5 volts relative to ground, the voltage between the output terminal and the V- pin would be 4.7 volts higher or 9.7 volts, which is exactly what we see and because of that I'll now reduce the output voltage to 5 volts again. As you can see, I'm now decreasing the input voltage and now for a change of more than 16 volts at the input, we got only 2 millivolts of change in the output voltage. Now I'm going to simulate changes in the auxiliary voltage in both directions and you'll see that this time there won't be any change in the output voltage. So the conclusion of this demonstration is that the deviations of the auxiliary negative voltage do not have any effect on the voltage between the output terminal and the V- pin, which was what we expected to see. The circuit is now supplied with an auxiliary power supply with a Zener diode. Now I'm going to simulate as if there are slow deviations of the mains voltage, as a result of which the rectified negative voltage, which is powering the Zener diode stabilizer, will change plus minus 10% approximately. 
because of the dynamic resistance of the Zener diode, these variations will not be fully regulated and the output voltage will be affected by that. As you saw in this demonstration, the output voltage changed by several tens of millivolts above and below its initial value. This is to demonstrate the effects of the temperature changes to the Zener diode voltage and how that affects the output voltage. Currently the bias current of the Zener diode is about 45 milliamps, and the temperature of the diode is higher than the ambient temperature. Because this Zener diode has a negative temperature coefficient of the Zener voltage, we are expecting that when we lower its temperature, the absolute value of the negative voltage will increase. And look how much the output voltage will drift just by touching the diode with my fingers. Now let's assume that you've built this power supply and you've added a fan inside the housing to facilitate the airflow and reduce the internal temperature. Now you'll see how much the output voltage will drop after I turn on the fan. As you saw in this demonstration, the output voltage dropped by several tens of millivolts from its initial value. And in this last demonstration, I'll increase the surrounding temperature of the diode by bringing a soldering iron close to it. The output voltage will change by more than 10 mV above its initial value. Now let's return to the elector article and review some of the statements there. First, let's review this statement. This laboratory power supply offers excellent line and load regulation. Well, we cannot say that this is true, because in the previous demonstrations we showed that with this solution any deviation of the auxiliary negative voltage will be seen as a variation in the output voltage. In particular, we saw that because of the dynamic resistance of the Zener diode, the variations of the input voltage are not fully regulated, which means that the line regulation is effectively worsened and it's far from being excellent. Now let's review this part here. The supply to the 723 is stabilized at 33 volts to prevent its maximum supply rating being exceeded. Again, this is not true or at least we can say that it's misleading for the readers because what it counts for the 723 is the difference between the V plus and V minus pins and in this case this difference is almost 38 volts. The following statement is true, however you'll hear my comment after I read it. When constructing the circuit, particular care should be taken to ensure that the 0 volts rail is of low resistance heavy gauge wire or wide PCB track, as voltage drops along this line can cause poor regulation and ripple at the output. The author seems to be very concerned with the wire gauge, but not at all with the Zener diode dynamic resistance and the temperature coefficient, which, as we saw, affect the output voltage. 
the dynamic resistance of the Zener diodes depends on the bias current and decreases significantly as the inverse current increases. Of course, the maximum bias current is limited with the maximum allowed power dissipation for the diode. However, for this case, the value of the resistor R1 seems to be too high, which means that the current through the Zener diode is less than the optimal and the effects of the dynamic resistance will be even more visible. So what would be the conclusion of this video? To conclude, a power supply with 723 that uses a Zener diode as a source of an auxiliary negative supply voltage has a fundamental design flaw or design weakness because any deviation of this auxiliary negative voltage will be seen as a variation in the output voltage. With other words, with this solution you practically give up the thermally compensated voltage reference inside 723 and introduce a voltage drift in the output because of the Zener diode. So for this power supply we can say that it's only as good as its weakest element and in this case that would be the Zener diode. If you decide to connect the V- pin to a potential lower than 0 volts, the components used for that auxiliary negative supply must be of roughly comparable accuracy and performance as the 723 and the resulting negative voltage should be with comparable or better stability. A simple Google search shows that do-it-yourself solutions for a regulated power supply with 723 are still popular so my aim was to provide better understanding of the 723 circuit in general, especially to the younger electronics enthusiasts, and to show the design flaw of the reviewed power supply to those who possibly decided to build or already have built this particular solution. In addition to this, I've put a link in the description to an article named A collection of proper design practices using the 723 regulator, where you can read a good summary of pros and cons for designing with 723. Thank you for watching and goodbye.